give honor to whom honor is due, to a wonderful God, a wonderful Savior, the one who loves us with an everlasting love. We give honor to the blessed hope, and that hope is a person, amen, and his name is Jesus, amen, and so we give honor and praise. Today is Sunday. It's a day of worship. It's a day that we come together corporately and collectively to lift up holy hands to a holy God. Amen. Church, get back into a fellowship, a fellowship mode, a fellowship cycle. Sunday is a day that we come to hear from the Lord, to open up our mouth and to praise and to worship him as a church. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be here. We had a busy day. Amen. Yesterday we rolled. Amen. Had a busy day yesterday. Had a great spiritual warfare conference. Uh, about maybe 11 churches was here yesterday. We had a great time in the Lord, but we're not finished. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for all who worked yesterday. Amen. It was a lot of work. Amen. Those who worked with First Lady, um, those who worked with Sharon James, we truly thank the Lord for you and for your commitment to the things of the Lord. Amen. We got a busy day today because we're going with Pastor Crawford, 45th anniversary, looking for the church. It's a, it's a worship day today. Amen. And so hopefully as you got to be girded up. Amen. Back in the old church, we did three services. Three services. Amen. Uh, we did a morning service. We did a three o'clock service. And then we would come back and had to do a seven o'clock service for the older saints. And so we rolled all day. So don't think it's strange that we're getting back into a, into a church mode. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've been looking at a brand new series that's designed to help us to line up with Christ as believers. And in our new series, we've been addressing this thing. It's called, it's entitled, I should say, it's about that time. It's about that time, watch this, for us to grow up. Amen. It's about that time, amen? amen? You can't save babies forever, amen? Something's wrong, like I said earlier, if you have a 15-year-old, amen, who acts like a 3-year-old, or if you have a 30-year-old who acts like a 15-year-old, or if you have a 50-year-old that think that they're 18 and 20, something is wrong. But it's the same thing in the spiritual realm when it comes down to Jesus Christ. Watch this. We should be growing from faith to faith. Am I right about it? We should be growing up through all the trials and tribulation and as we grow up in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So we are preaching a series entitled, It's About That Time. No More Excuses. It's time for us to grow up. Amen. It's time for the believers to, to act saved. It's time for the believers to talk like you saved. Time for the believers to look like you saved. Amen. Stop trying to look like the world. Amen. Be modest. Time for the believers to act like they're saved. Amen. Live like you saved. Serve like you saved. Amen. And then watch this. Treat others like you're saved. Can I get a witness up in here? Amen. So it's time to grow up. As we begin this series, so many, so many spirits are attacking Jesus' church. Amen. We got the spirit of distraction. That's why folks can't do the things for the Lord any longer, because the spirit of distraction have them captivated. The spirit of sexual immorality and lustfulness has invaded the church. The spirit of self-promotion. Amen. Status. It's found its way into the New Testament church. The spirit of rebellion to all authority. Amen. Amen. Children don't want to listen to parents. Amen. Grown parents no longer want to honor their mother and their father. Nobody wants to fall under authority. It's a spirit of rebellion. And we know the spirit of rebellion is witchcraft. Amen. And then, of course, that is a spirit, witchcraft. Amen. But, but there's another spirit that we want to identify this morning. And today we want to identify a, a familiar spirit. 
isn't so easily recognized along with these other spirits. But watch this. It's a familiar spirit, hold on, rooted, that is also an unclean spirit. Walk with me today. We're talking about growing up. We're talking about looking more like Jesus. We're talking about walking in the newness of life, being what the Lord has saved us to be. Amen? And so as we look at this, all of us, all of us, from the pulpit to the wall, come under the attack of this familiar spirit. Amen? Matter of fact, as we get into this text, uh, 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 we're going to see something here as we look at this text out of Matthew, I want to draw your attention to our sermon text today. Matthew 18. We put it up on the screen, but make sure you bring your Bibles, because you know one thing I realize is technology can fail you. The spirit of the power of the prince of the air, he controls wavelengths. Amen? So don't get so caught up in your devices. Amen? Get back into this written word. Look what it says as we stand for the reading for those who are able to stand. A familiar passage of scripture for us today. We're talking about growing up. We're talking about looking more like Jesus. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times. But 77 times, 70 and seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And as he be, began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. And since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife, watch this, and his children, Lord have mercy. And all that he had be sold to repay the debt. And at this, the servant fell on his knees before him. And be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him. Canceled the debt. Canceled. Canceled the debt. And let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him, began to choke him. Y'all know how we do. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. And his fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. You forgave your brother. You forgive your brother or a sister from your heart. And when the other servants saw that had happened, they were outraged, went and told their master everything that had happened. And then the master called the servant in, you wicked, key word, you wicked servant. He said, I counseled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he said, pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Time to grow up. Time to act like Jesus. And so let's preach this message. Stop being crippled by that unforgiving spirit that you possess. Grow up. Stop being crippled by that spirit that you keep holding on to like the world that you can't forgive. Grow up. Grow up. Father, we do thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Recognize who you are. Sovereign, holy, and righteous. Eternal. The king of glory. All power belongs to you. And we're so thankful that you consider us. We're so thankful that you remember that we're nothing but dust before you. That you are the life giver. 
And so we bow before you and we throw ourselves down on your mercy this morning. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us, O oh God. Speak life to us. Uphold us in your right hand of justice. And Lord God, we pray that you would infuse us, fill us, control us by your spirit so that we would look like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus, serve like Jesus, walk like Jesus, love like Jesus, and that we will also learn how to forgive like Jesus has forgiven us. Now speak a rhema word to this, your congregation. We give your name, honor, praise, and glory. Sanctify us in your word, for your word alone is true. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 You may have your seats. Thank you. Stop being crippled by that unforgiving spirit you possess. It's time to grow up. Holding folks captive by an unforgiving spirit cripples the captor. Let me say that again. A lot of times we think we're punishing that person, but we're actually punishing ourselves. And there are many brothers and sisters in God's church that are spiritually crippled. And when you're spiritually crippled, rooted, you become unproductive. When you're spiritually crippled, amen, you're not growing. I don't care what you may think. You're not growing. Amen. And it's all predicated because uh, we refuse to forgive folks. An unforgiving spirit which is revealed by holding grudges, animosity, anger, holding on to bitterness, long-standing resentments. Amen? And, and then there's another thing that unforgiveness does. It, it brings forth this non-involvement. I'm angry, so I'm not going to be around you. Don't want nothing to do with you. We got a lot of that going on in the New Testament church. A non-involvement spirit. Watch this, saints. Uh, this type of spirit will keep you and I small. Keep you small. Keep you to a place that you're not growing. I don't care how much Bible you think you know and and you can quote scriptures and, and you got this prayer language. Watch this. If you ain't forgiving folks, no, you, you are small. You're not growing. Amen? Because of the spirit that's crippling you and I. Amen? And no one has a biblical right. No one has a biblical right to hold other folks hostage to an unforgiving spirit. Amen? We, we preached a message Years ago, similar to that, you, you got to let that stuff go, boo. You got to let that stuff go, amen? amen? Amen. Unforgiveness is an unclean spirit. I don't care how it's modeled out. I don't care what social media says. and I don't care what people say that I have a right to not forgive. No, no, no. Unforgiveness is an unclean spirit. Unforgiveness cripples the believer. Unforgiveness keeps the believer in a, in a state of spiritual immaturity. Doesn't make any difference. Amen? Doesn't make any difference. If you can't forgive, then you're not growing. Amen? Matter of fact, as we understand this real quick, we're just going to put our foot on this a little bit. Is that all right this morning? Because we all need to grow up. Amen? All of us. When I say all, like I told you before, when I'm preaching to you, I'm also preaching to myself. Don't think I'm telling you something that, that is not affecting me. Amen? Amen? And so watch this. Get this and understand this this morning uh, and, and, and grab this. Uh, good, healthy, godly, functional, loving human relationships are impossible without a forgiven spirit. I want, you to, I want that to soak in for a minute. I want you to look at it. I put it up on the screen for you because I, I want you to look at it. I want you to internalize it. Amen? You can't maintain human relationships if you're not willing to forgive. 
because we're dealing with imperfect people. Marred people. People that are, watch this, tainted with sin and corruption in this body. And you can't have and maintain a functional, healthy, godly relationship without having a forgiving spirit. Am I right about it? Uh, a husband and wife, you can't have a healthy, functional, loving marriage without forgiveness. Let me tell you something, 40 years this year, married first lady, there's a lot of forgiveness that got to take place. She got to forgive me over a lot of stuff, I got to forgive her. If not, we won't have a functional, godly marriage. Amen? A lot of forgiveness got to take place in family relationships. A lot of forgiveness, watch this, rooted, has to take place in church relationships, rubbing up against people, different opinions, amen, different epistemologies, and we're rubbing up against imperfection, amen, work relationships. I don't care if they're unsaved or not. You still have to have good, healthy, functional relationships, friendships, amen. In order to have friends, you, you have to make yourself friendly. A lot of us ain't got no friends because we just ain't friendly. Amen. Bottom line. And then watch this. A lot of us ain't got no friends because we always have a judgmental spirit and we can't forgive folks. Can I get a witness up in here? If you can't forgive, you can't have good relationships. Amen. And I'm talking to us to believe this morning. Amen. And so, and so as we understand this and, and look at this, we have to understand what's taking place here. Amen? Uh, look at this. Check it out. Peter asked Jesus a question. Amen? And this is after, watch this, in the hermeneutics, in the context. This is after Jesus, get friend is talking about, amen, he get friend is talking about church accountability. Jesus over in Matthew 18, a few verses up, over in verse 15, uh, he says, if your brother or sister sins against you, amen, look at the context. If they sin against you, point out their fault just between the two of you, and if they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, even to the, this Jesus um, 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 speaking here, this ain't Pastor Webster. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. And truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And so in the context of this, Jesus is talking about someone who sins against you, which you should do. We don't even do that in church. We, we get on the phone. We tell everybody what so-and-so did to me. No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you go to them privately. And y'all work that thing out privately, and then the Bible says, then you have won your brother over or your sister over. We don't even do what the Bible says. And so we got all these people up in the mess. Can I get a witness up in here? Oh, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. Amen? And we want to know how the devil gets involved because we don't do what the Bible says. Amen? We don't go face to face. Amen? We don't go face. I remember when I was coming up, and some of y'all know, we was coming. We didn't have all this gun violence. You know why? Because we put it on knees. We would go face to face with that. Ain't no, it's easy to do this, but it's something when you got to get down in the ditch and go face to face. Am I right about it? Yeah. And so in the context of this, y'all know we're a militant church. On the context of this, Peter asked a question. Now, Peter asked a question on the, off the context of this. Peter asked a question to Jesus. Amen? Peter says, watch this, in, in Matthew 18, 21, and then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Watch this. Watch, check Peter out real quick. Look at Peter. He, he says, Seven, I mean, uh, he says, do I do it seven times? Peter's very generous in his, in his worldly, fleshly concept. Let me say that again. In his worldly, 
fleshly concept of forgiveness. And, and watch this. If the truth be told, Peter's more generous than us. Because he says seven times. And we say maybe three times, maybe two, but then watch this, you out. I'm done with you, you out. Am I right about it? Can I get an amen up in here? Amen. Three strikes. You out. You out. Amen. And watch this. We, we, and I said we, tell your neighbor we. And at time, tell your neighbor me. Only give you three shots. Peter says, watch this. Is it seven times generous? That we forgive, amen? And, 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 and watch this, with that, here we go, Jesus presents some brand new teaching. Brand new, this brand new stuff, straight off the press. Jesus, the king of glory, uh, Mary's baby, the son of God, God who, who is in flesh, the creator of heaven and earth. Ha, he comes and he presents a brand new teaching. Amen. He presents a brand new. See, one thing about us in the New Testament church, we can't be like David and them in the Old Testament church. We can never ask for impeccatory stuff to happen to other people. See, David and them could say, Lord, consume them. Burn them up. But now as we fall under grace, you and I can't go to God and say, kill them, God. Burn them up. No, no, because we fall under grace. And the same grace that hit us is the same grace that needs to hit them. That's called impeccatory prayers, not for the New Testament believer. Amen? You don't never pray that God will deal with something in that way of killing folks. Or take, nah, 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 not the child of God. Yeah. Yeah, we got to grow up. And so look at Jesus real quick. I, that little sidebar that Jesus brings us a new teaching. Jesus says, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Y'all can multiply that. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. Jesus goes into this parable. Amen. Now, now, now Jesus presents forgiveness in the context of the kingdom of heaven. In the realm of those, just watch this. He's speaking to the, in the realm of those who say they love the Lord. He ain't speaking to the world. No, he's speaking in the context of the kingdom of heaven. Folks who say that they know Jesus, love Jesus. Amen. And so watch this. As we look at this and understand this, Jesus presents his new, uh, 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 new teaching and he lets him know, even though he throws numerical numbers up, but he's actually letting him know that forgiveness is unlimited. Forgiveness is a matter of the heart, not the mind. It's, not a, it's, it, it's, a, it's a matter of your spirit. Here we go. Not your soul. See, your soul is still contaminated by sin. You better walk with me today. Amen. That's where all your feelings and emotion. No, no. But your spirit man. That's where forgiveness lies. In this new man, that's your spirit man. See, a lot of people say, well, I don't feel like forgiving. But ho, 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 boo. This ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. This has to do with your spirit. Huh? Get away from this. Uh, 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 my feelings. And I don't know. No, nobody want to hear that. That, no, your spirit man, that new man, that, that new Montecos, that new man that God has created in you, the, the new man that's a partaker of the divine nature. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so he, he lets us know that, that, watch this, it's unlimited. Amen? See, see the mind keeps records of wrong. Oh, come on, y'all. Huh? Now watch this. You say, well, pastor, I can't never forget what sister so-and-so did to me. I can never forget. Watch this. Hold on. I can't never forget, pastor, what you did to me. Lord, have mercy. 
I can't forget with my, my wife or my husband. Now watch this. No, no, no. Uh, you can't forget, but watch this. But you are to treat it as though it never happened and the power of the spirit will begin to work as you get into the word of God and as you pray. And God has a way of now taking that was on the forefront of your mind and casting it. It says that he has taken our sins and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. Well, God's an omniscient God. God knows the beginning from the end. God don't, don't forget nothing, but God says, I treat your sin as though you never sinned. Yeah. Get away from all this humanism. I want to I wanna see us grow up. Amen. I want to see us grow up. Can I get a witness up in here? So forgiveness, as we look at this, is a spiritual thing. Huh? It's a spiritual thing. And anyone that can see true forgiveness can really be. And now, don't get me wrong. The world has a soto forgiveness. Don't get me wrong. But the believer has a spiritual forgiveness. Amen. There's a difference. Get out of here. We're not the world. The, the world and the, and the natural man and the spiritual man are two different entities, two different people. But for forgiveness is a spiritual thing. Amen. Jesus said he, uh, on the cross, Jesus says this. Uh, he says, Father, forgive them. That's what I'm telling you. It's a spiritual thing. For they don't know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes. They at the foot at the cross, dividing up his clothes. Amen. And, 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 and we see here that forgiveness is a spiritual thing. And, and watch this. All born again believers, all of those born of the water and of the spirit, are spiritual, amen, and are qualified to enter into God's kingdom, have the same nature. The same nature that said on the cross, the same nature of the one that said on the cross, Father, forgive them. You better get this today. You say, That's, that was Jesus. I, I'm not Jesus. Oh, 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 you've been crucified with Christ. And you no longer live, but watch this. But now Christ lives in you. And this life that you now live by the faith of the Son of God who loves you. Uh, you've been born of the Spirit. Amen. You've been born again. Amen. Brand new. And so as we look at this, we see here that, that, that it's a spiritual thing. Forgiveness, the spirit of, of forgiveness knows no limits. Amen. It, it, it has no measure. It has no number of times. Amen. Someone online need to hear this. Amen. Why? Because the spirit of forgiveness is a reality and partakes, as I said earlier, it partakes of the new divine nature. Amen. It's of the same spirit that cried out. It's the same spirit that cried out on the cross. Father, forgive them. The same spirit. Amen. And so as we look at this, Jesus tells Peter, uh, he, he gives him this numerical number, but in all reality, he is saying, watch this, that forgiveness has no limits. We're talking about growing up. We're talking about letting some stuff go. We're talking about setting people free, amen? We're talking about stop walking around mad all the time and, and resentful and holding on to stuff. Why? Because you are the one that's captive. You're the one who's caught up in bondage. You're the one who still got chains on. You're the one still in prison. Huh? You're the one. You can think what you want. And Jesus, watch this. Jesus, he, he does something here. Uh, 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 he, I asked a question before I get into this next thing. Do you, brothers and sisters, do you find it hard to forgive? Do you find it hard to show mercy? But it's easier to hold grudges and resentment, amen? And, and, and the issue is if you, if you can hold on to resentment and bitterness and, and, and what your mama did to you and, and your daddy did to you, and, and, and we know we, we're in this thing now, in this cultural um, um, separation thing, and what the man did to you, and, and I'm still trying to figure out who the man is, and amen, and what all this is, amen, and you know what the issue is? The issue is spiritual. 
It's a spiritual issue. This is a spiritual issue, amen? Now, this is, this is spiritual. And as believers, we're battling with a spiritual issue of holding on to old and new offenses. That's a spiritual issue. Huh? Spiritual issue. Jesus illustrates the spirit of forgiveness by referring to it. I want you to write this stuff down because we're talking about growing up. Amen. I want you to see this. Jesus illustrates the spirit of forgiveness in three illustrative truths. Three. Amen. And the first truth that Jesus does in the, in the text is in the text. I'm not going to go outside the text. It's in, it's in, the, in the text, in the, in the exegesis. The first illustrative truth is God's forgiveness of enormous debt. Look, look what he says. Therefore, in, in verses 23 to 27, therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Now, this is a large amount of money. Amen? Amen? This is a large amount, and I want you to see this. This amount is big. If we had to put an estimate uh, uh, on 10,000 bags of gold, amen, we're talking about if we had to put an estimate on it, amen? And this could be off or some millions, or something, but we're talking about about $12 million dollars. And we're using this enormous debt that this man owed. Twelve million dollars this man owed. Amen. And look, look, look what he says. And he says, and since he was not able to pay the massive order that he and his wife, his children, all they had, um, had to be sold to repay the debt. Y'all see that? And, and at this, the servant fell on his, on, on his knees before him. Be patient with me. He begged and I will pay back everything. And the servant's master took pity on him and counseled the debt and let him go. Huh? What, what are you saying here, Jesus? Well, well, the parable is showing us, the parable is simple. God is, is, is like the king. Amen? That, that takes into account of the servant's debt. And, and it's a debt, watch this, that you and I can't pay. It's a debt that's so enormous that there's no way that you and I can pay back the debt that we owe to a holy God. See, the debt that we owe is the penalty and the price for sin. And there's no way at all that you and I can ever repay the debt for sin. It's too enormous. It's too much. Amen. And he, and he says that, watch this, in the debt we can't but we can't pay. And so Jesus brings us, you and I, smack dab into our own sinfulness. Amen? Into our own, see, we don't talk about sin. Yeah, our own sinfulness. Our sinfulness is a debt that we can't pay. Amen? Romans 3.23 says, for everyone has sinned. And, and we all fall short of God's glory. Y'all see that? It says that we all sin, amen? And so God being the king says, watch this, uh, Pastor Webster, you owe a debt to me, but there's no way that you can pay it. And watch this, and I love you so much, and I know that you can't pay your sin debt, amen? And you can't pay it, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a way for you. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to package up my only begotten son and robe him up in flesh and I'm going to allow him to come down into this lowland of sorrow, amen, to walk among earthen vessels and I'm going to allow him to be beaten and, and whipped and scorned and, and I'm going to allow him to go to a rugged cross up there on Calvary, up on Calvary. I'm going to allow him to go up there and I'm going to allow all of my wrath to be poured upon him and I'm going to take all your sin Pastor Webster, sin that you did, sin that you were born into, sin that you're going to do now, sin that you're going to do in the future, and I'm going to take all of your sin, and I'm going to pour it down on my son, and he who knew no sin is going to become your sin so that you can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to allow him to pay a debt. That you can't pay. Lord, 
Lord, have mercy. Huh? I'm allow Ephesians, but, but God is so rich in mercy. I don't know about you, as I get older, I, I, see, see all that pride stuff, when you get older, that pride leaves you. That ego leaves you. Amen. That stuff starts to leave you get older and you find yourself falling down every day on the mercies of God. You find yourself, Lord, have mercy, Lord. Lord, as you get older, you get rid of all that young stuff and now you see the mercies of God that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, you learn how to fall down. I'm falling down. I don't know. Uh, you may have it all together, but I'm falling down on the mercies of God every day. Lord, have mercy on my You might be so uh, religious that you don't need, but I, I'm not all that religious. And I need the mercies of God. And God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, it's the gospel, y'all. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And it's only by God's grace, huh? Not because you go to church. Not because you're a good girl or, or a good guy because you pay your taxes, because you got a little bit of money, you got a degree. Nah, nah, nah. It's only by the grace of God, the unmerited favor that you've been saved. Yeah, he illustrates here a debt. No one could ever sin more against us more than what we've sinned against God. No one can ever sin more against us than how we sinned against God. You better get this today. We're talking about growing up. Yeah, we're talking about growing up. Amen. 10,000 bags of gold, $12 million. And Jesus leads us into this second illustrative truth here. He's letting Peter know. Amen. He, 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 Y'all walk with me today? Amen. Hopefully this is, see, sometimes preaching ain't always about you running around and jumping over pews. Preaching sometimes means it's like a little mist of dew. That comes down. And, and what, what it does is saturate. Even though you don't know you're being saturated. See, the Holy Spirit now is bringing down this word. And, and you may not feel no excitement, but he's saturating it. He's getting down into, into your heart and into your mind and your soul. That's how he grows you up. Sometimes uh, the, the empty barrel makes the most loudest noise. But sometimes just being quiet and letting that word just saturate you. And then you start to identify yourself and you see yourself with an unforgiving spirit. Holding on to stuff. Need to grow up. Got to grow up. Real quick, real quick. The Israelites, real fast. The Israelites, they, they, they came through the Red Sea and had... And isn't this something that how God delivers you, but you're still ungrateful? How God makes a way for you, but you you still ungrateful, you still rebellious, and your character has not changed, huh? Towards God. But but it, but watch this. The Israelites, he says in Nehemiah, he says, they refuse to listen and fail to remember the miracles you perform. Watch this, all the miracles God did in our lives. All the miracles, and watch this, we're so spiritually undiscerned that we don't even know a miracle when we see one. Because you perform among them, and they became stiff-necked, and their rebellion and appointed leader in order to return to the slave. But you, but watch God. But even though we're rebellious and ungrateful, but look at God who's immutable. That means no matter what, God never changes. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. See, that's why you can trust him. See, God ain't like your friends, fair weather friends. And the moment that you say something, they want to turn their back. God said, no, no, no. I'm going to keep loving you. I'm, I'm going to keep forgiving you. I'm, I'm going to keep making a way for you. I'm going to keep...
opening up doors for you. Why? Because I love you. Why? Because you're engrafted in my hand. You are forgiving God. Gracious. Compassionate. Slow to anger. Thank you, Lord. Have mercy. And abounding in love. Therefore, you did not desert them. Isn't that some good news? Let's take a minute and give the Lord a shout of praise. Let that thing go and grow up. Second illustrative truth, forgiving, forgiving folks holding other hostages with an unforgiving spirit. Watch this. Look, he goes here. He, look at the, check out the amount. Oh, the, the forgiving servant, watch this. Let me go back and read it. It says, but, but, but when that servant went out, the one that, that had the reprieve, the one that the master let go, but when he went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins, who owed him, let's put, in, let's put a, a Let's put a money amount on this. Now, he owed the master $12 million. And then he goes out after he'd been released, pimping down the street, amen? See his boy on the corner, see his boy over there, and he says, watch this, I got released from $12 million, but I, but you owe me $17. You owe me $17, Jack. And watch this, and I ain't letting you go. That's how we are. We owe an enormous amount and we're going to look at the pennies that somebody else owed us and we don't want to let them go when we've been released. Huh? He grabbed them. Begin to shake them down. Huh? Shake them down, shake them down. Huh? Choke them a little bit. What's this? So don't laugh at that, Sister Booker. Don't you laugh at that, digging this Booker. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me. I'll pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he, couldn't, until he could pay the debt. And when the other servants saw what he had, had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that happened. See, see, unforgiving uh, watch this. Let me say this again. Forgiven folks hold. Uh, look, mm, forget. Watch this. Forgiven folks holding others hostage with an unforgiving spirit. Those who have been forgiven of much. Those who have been forgiven of so much. That now they want to hold hostage with an unforgiving spirit. Yeah, I know. But look at this. Look at this. We got to get real. Watch this. Watch this. If God forgave our sins, why aren't we forgiving others? Huh? Grab this. Let's be real. Let's be real. Watch this. If the truth be told, hold on to your seats. I'm almost done. This is some good stuff. You know why it's good stuff? Because it's real. You know why it's good stuff? Because in this corruptible flesh dwells no good thing. You know why it's good stuff? Because if the truth be told, everyone, you can think about your neighbor. Right now, you're thinking about somebody that you know, but you need to look at yourself. Watch this. If the truth be told, we all have an unforgiving spirit. And it's an it's a, it's a unclean spirit. And no matter what you say, you try to justify. God says, no, no, no. You cannot justify an unforgiving spirit. See, the command is that you forgive. Now, you can't reconcile because it takes two to reconcile, but it only takes one to forgive. See, the command is that you forgive. You can't make nobody love you. You can't make nobody fellowship with you. But the command is for you to Forgive. Reconciliation takes two people. Forgiveness only takes one. Lord have mercy. Let me preach the street. Let me go down to the Baptist church down the street. 
And if the truth be told, I'm almost done. If the truth be told, if we want to be real about it, we all offend someone at some time. Huh? We all, ain't nobody got it all. We all offend somebody at some time. I like, I couldn't wait for years. I couldn't wait to bring this text out, this scripture out. See, when you're a preacher, you put stuff away. I can't, I say, I can't wait to bring this scripture out. Look what it says in Ecclesiastes 7, 20, 21 and 22. It says, do not pay attention to every word people say, or you may hear your servant cursing you. You up there, listen to everything, eavesdrop, you're going to hear something. For you know in your heart that many times you yourself have cursed others. But, but watch this, but I had to go over to the ERV translation. Look what it says. It says, don't listen to everything people say. You may hear your own servant saying bad things about you. And, and you know that many times you too have said bad things about other people. What am I saying? Why can't you forget? Why? You've been saying stuff that you ain't got no business saying. You, you do things that you ain't got no business doing. You come short. We sin. We fail. We offend. Amen. And at times, watch this. At times, we don't smile. We don't speak. We don't acknowledge. We don't greet. We don't, we, we, we become preoccupied. Amen. We forget stuff that people get mad about because we done forgot it. You get old, you're starting to forget stuff. We don't show up like we should. We don't, we don't do right all the time like we should. What, watch this. At times, we still, oh, someone said not me. We can find ourselves not telling the truth. We offend. We gossip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sin. What am I saying? What I'm saying is, according to Romans 3, 10, there is none righteous. No, not one. Amen? And an unforgiving spirit shows, uh, it, it shows that we do fall short, all of us, and we do offend. We offend, amen? And, 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 and the Bible tells us, watch this, it tells us, I'm almost done, watch this. An unforgiving spirit shows that a, a, as a person is spiritually, when you have an unforgiving spirit, it shows that the person is spiritually immature. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you run in ministry. I don't care if your name's up on lights. Watch this. If you are not forgiving people, you are immature. You're inept. You're ill natured. You're, you're self centered. Amen. You're spiritually mature. Amen. Unforgiving spirit, watch this. You, it makes you immature because an unforgiving spirit only understands, hold this truth. An unforgiving spirit only understands the nature of man because it don't understand the nature of God. See, an unforgiving spirit is always looking at man and man's nature, but when you learn how to forgive, you're looking at God and his nature. You're looking at who God is and all of his mercy and his compassion, and now your eyes is not looking at the nature of man, but now I'm looking at the nature of the God of my salvation. Yeah, you got to let that stuff go. Am I right about it? Yes. Forgiveness. Real quick, what does forgiveness do? It activates our faith. Watch this, listen to what Jesus says real quick. There's some good stuff, we need these points and we are. Listen to what Jesus says. Don't, don't listen to me, listen to Jesus. He says, have faith in God, Jesus answers. And truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go through yourself and to the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believe that what they say happened will be done to them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. We love that scripture, don't we? Isn't that some good stuff? Man, just your faith. Activate your faith and you can speak to the mountain. And tell the mountain that we hoop this. And tell the mountain, and be thou removed. And church the ooh. Huh? Get all happy. Hey. But, but let's finish the text. He says, therefore, therefore, tell your neighbor, therefore, 
Tell you whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. Because when you don't forgive, it now takes away the activation of your faith. See, in order for you to activate faith, you got to be a forgiving person. Talking about all this faith that you got. No, no. If you ain't forgiving folks, you can't activate the faith that will move mountains. That's Bible. Huh? Isn't that something? Yeah. But not only that, look, to receive the benefits that come from the Lord's Prayer that we recited earlier, a forgiving spirit is required. This is how then how you ought to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, how will be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us today our daily bread. Here we go. Here's the forgiveness. The forgiveness is all in this. And forgive us of our debts as we also have forgiven You can't claim the Lord's prayer's benefits without forgiving folks. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. It's something when we preach the word for what it says. Huh? You're talking about claiming the benefits. No, you ain't claiming no benefits if you ain't forgiving folks. Huh? You ain't, you ain't getting no uh, receive answer prayer. Look what he says in, in Mark eleven twenty five. 25. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Eh? As you lifting up prayers of petition and supplication, when you're, when you're holding folks hostage to your unforgiving spirit, your prayer is going in the ceiling, coming back down. I know folks who may not care for me. Amen, that's real. May not even like me. Don't, can't stand me. Don't even want to be around me. Amen. Yeah, it happens. You got some too. Don't you, look, don't even want to look at you. You know, they, they, they don't even want to look at your face. Am I right about it? But, but I understand this principle of forgiveness. And so watch this. So what I do, I go to them. See, see, I, I had somebody one time in the store, I saw them in the store, and they was trying to run from me. Man, they don't want to talk to me, and I chase them out of the aisle. they were. What I, what I, what I, I saw that, I saw him, and I ran over to him, I, hey, how you doing, I love you, oh. see you don't want, you don't want your blessings to be robbed by somebody else, no, no, you can't make them reconcile, but you got everything in your power to love them and to forgive them. See, I wanted God's power to stay with me. See, I could have been like them, mad and resentful, don't want to talk to them and don't want to say, then, then guess what? Then God's power wouldn't be with me. God's power, watch this, when, when I did that, God's power released me. Some in the church right now, you need to be released. God's power filled me. Amen. And so as we look at this, as we close, watch this. You can't ask God to do something for you that you're not willing to do for others. Let's close with this. Isn't this some good stuff? I'm almost done. We got church all day. Yeah, yeah. Go get you something to eat and meet me down at Kingsway. Amen. Let's have church all day. Amen. Let's close with this principle. Watch this. You can't ask God to do something for you that you're not willing to do for others. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. This is real stuff. Huh? We lose forgiveness when we fail to forgive. We just said, Matthew 6, 14, for if you forgive those or forgive others who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. All offenses, injustice. We're in a month right now, we're celebrating Black History Month. 
Am I right about it? But the biblical celebration of black history should be first how powerful God is and what God can do. Am I right about it? Black History Month, right? But the second thing of the celebration should be about forgiveness. Y'all ain't walk with me. See, see, it's about, it's about forgiveness and unity. See, it's not about separation and it's not about blaming and it's not about what happened. That's, watch this, that's under the blood. This is me forgiving. This is me forgiving of injustice. This is me forgiving of social injustice and I'm not going to walk with a bitter spirit and I'm not going to be separated from another culture. God says, watch this, Black History Month is about forgiveness. Huh? It's not about no colors and all this stuff. Now. No, it's about forgiveness. Yeah, it happened. But watch this. You gonna hold on? Or you gonna be like Jesus? And forgive. Am I right about it? Y'all ain't gotta cut y'all, y'all know Pastor Webb telling y'all the truth because it's biblical. And so as we look at this, unwillingness to forgive may be an indicator as I close. When you and I can't forgive, we hold on, we are so resentful, we hold on to bitterness and grudges, it may be an indication or indicator that you've never been truly forgiven. Maybe you've never been truly forgiven by God because when you've been truly forgiven by God, amen, you're able to walk in forgiveness, amen? Forgiveness, uh, when you've been forgiven of your sin, amen? Check it out, understand Forgiving others is an evidence that God has forgiven you. I'm done. See, when you forgive others, this is an evidence that God has forgiven you. Amen? That's what it is. Look, as I close with that text, it says in Matthew 32, 35, then the master called the servant and said, you wicked servant. You wouldn't forgive your homeboy, your homegirl. He said, and I canceled all the debts of yours. And you begged me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? And watch this. In the anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father would treat each of you unless you forgive your father or sister from your heart. It shows that you are a child of mercy. It shows that, watch this, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. It shows that when we're able to forgive that those who, that we have been truly forgiven from our sins, that we have been set free from from past offenses, that we have been given mercy, that we have been filled with God's love, that we have been saved by God's grace, that right now, watch this, that right now we're on our way to heaven. We've been delivered, we've been adopted, we've been sealed, we've been blessed are those who are able to forgive. So as I'm done, watch this, we got to grow up. And there's some things that we got to ask God to help us and we got to lay it down to the foot of the cross. But watch this, not just in spirit, but now we got to get physical with it. Now we got to put hands and feet to action. And we got to now, watch this, show full forgiveness. And and mercy, amen? We got to go forth so that we can look like Christ. Am I right? Stop being crippled. Stop being crippled, rooted by an unforgiving spirit. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. It's about time. It's about time. Let us grow up. And look like Jesus. May God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Maybe one here today. One here today that stands in need. To be adopted. To be justified freely by God's grace. That means that there has to be a repentance. There has to be a recognizing. Recognition I should say that you are a sinner. Get away from this thing, I'm a good person. Well, hell is filled up with good people. Hell is filled up with good people. Heaven is filled up with sanctified, blood-washed, 
people. And in order for you to go to heaven, you must come by way of the cross. You got to come by way of Jesus. You got to come to Jesus like a beggar. And you got to recognize that you are a sinner. And you got to call upon his name. You got to say, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And forgive me of my sin. You got to be like that tax collector. And he beat his breast and he cried out to the Lord, Lord save you. And the Lord will save you. Call upon the Lord and he shall save you. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. And if anyone hears me and let me in, I will come in and I will sup with them. He ain't talking about fellowship. He's talking about relationship. Is there one here today that says, Lord save me? Just raise your hand. Maybe you're online right now. You need the Lord to save you. Lord, save me. Be my master. Be my God. Be my king. And I come to you just as I am. All my baggage, all my sin, I lay it down at the foot of the cross. Lord, save me. Is there one in the sanctuary? Lord, save me. I just want to see your hand. If you said that prayer for the first time, Lord, save me. That's all you got to say. Lord, save me. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you are savior. Just raise your hand. If you're at home right now and you just ask the Lord, call that number on the screen. Call that number. Let someone know today. We want to hear from you. Today I've given my life to Christ. Rooted, we got to grow up. We got to let some stuff go. Church members mad with church members. Family members mad with... We got to let that stuff go. And we got to learn how to forgive. We got to learn how to lay it down. We got to let that stuff go so that we can be set free. May God bless you. In heaven, richly smile upon you. Thank you for joining us in service today, and as always, you can visit us on our website at www.rbfchurch.com, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you have a safe and prosperous week.